Now more than ever, transportation business owners need industry experts at every stage in their company's life cycle. We bring them to you in the hot seat. Welcome to In the Hot Seat with the Tenney Group. I'm Spencer Tenney. It's good to be with you. We got another good one today. Today we have Daniel Stevenson, uh, M&A specialist from Geotis. Daniel, welcome to the hot seat. Hey, thank you, Spencer. Happy to be here. All right. Well, before we get, before we heat things up here, yeah. a couple of things. Just tell us about yourself. Tell us a little bit about Geotis. Yeah. Um, so Geotis is a 3PL, a, a third-party logistics provider. Uh, we're also in the transportation management uh, uh, business. We are a global company. We are French-owned. Uh, we operate in, um, we have facilities in 67 countries, uh, and we have a network in over 120 countries. I love it. All right. Now, in our office, we call attorneys. Yep. The deal killers. We got deal, we got, we got deal makers and we got deal breakers. Yeah. And so, obviously, in terms of this is what you do. Yeah. So, what are two characteristics of someone that has a high probability of being a deal breaker as an attorney? Yeah, I think um, I think first thing is just figuring. I mean, experience, right? Like, mm -hmm. if 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 I'm dealing when I see um, when I see uh, the deal list and I see uh, the counsel on their side, I'm hoping that it's somebody who's really good because if they're really good, it's going to make the transaction really easy. If I don't recognize the name and I go uh, Google and look up the person, um, and their specialty is not in doing deals, right? So it's other things. Uh, then I'm good. That's going to give me pause because mm -hmm. because it's um, uh, the ten thousand hour right. Experience matters. Uh, doing these things matters. Uh, mm -hmm. So that would give me that would give me pause. Um, and then I think um, I think dealing just with overly aggressive personalities that you know dig their heels in over things that that really don't matter that much. So as you and I can probably both appreciate, every deal that we work on doesn't always make it to the finish line. So what, what are some of the characters, uh, characteristics of deals that die along the way? And, and what can we do to avoid that? Yeah. So uh, this, is where, this is where you guys come in, right? <laughs> um, uh, and I think that's, you know, uh, setting realistic expectations on, on what a reasonable price should be. Um, uh, and, you know, reasonable minds are always going to differ, uh, but you'll, you'll often have conversations and, and, you know, there's just ideas of what an appropriate price are, are way out of whack. Um, so number one, probably be price. Um, uh, and then you'll see a lot of deals that, that get blown up in due diligence. So I want to camp out a little bit in terms of, you know, a lot of people, when we start talking about due diligence, they don't necessarily connect. Like there is a, a whole different variety of subsections of yeah. due diligence. So let's talk about the legal due diligence. Yeah. When you're going through legal due, uh, due diligence, what as a buyer, what are the, uh, the few of the major boxes yeah. that you are going to have to check in order to satisfy your group to kind of get through that legal due diligence? From my perspective, you know, I want to look, I want to look at the minutes. I want to be able to kind of see and read uh, about what the story is of the company. Um, I want to make sure I understand the, uh, the ownership. Ownership is very important. I uh, want to make sure that that's kind of clean, not kind of clean. I want to make sure that's clean. Um, uh, and then I want to look at, you know, debt obligations that may be outstanding. Mm -hmm. um, I want to look at uh, different employment agreements. If you have uh, key employees, uh, I want to be able to look at those contracts and see, you know, uh, uh, when I acquire the company, um, you know, who's coming with the company. Um, off the top of my head, those are kind of some of the um, easy things. All right. We're on a roll. So next question. Um, buyer seller, their line, we got basically the, the purchase price. We're all agreed to everything. Now it's left up to the attorneys, the buyers and the seller's attorneys to get this thing papered, as we say, um, so that, so that the seller can get paid and the buyer yeah. can go do what yeah. they want to do with it. So yeah. when you kind of get to that point and you and the attorney on the other side of the table are trying to iron out the remaining details, where do you spend, where do you typically find yourself spending the most time going back and forth with the seller's attorney to try to get the deal closed. Yeah, um, it, it's in the identification section, mm -hmm. um, and and we're sitting here, um, we're trying to figure out risk allocation. Risk uh, allocation. Okay. Fundamentally, we're trying to figure out, um, uh, you know, at some point, buyers have to put their big boy pants on, right? Um, we know that companies aren't going to be perfect, um, 
but we also, you know, we, we want to know what we're getting. Uh, so uh, mm-hmm. there will be certain identification uh, provisions in there that will make sure that, that a buyer gets the benefit of their bargain um, uh, and that a seller has a certain level of comfort um, that they're going to be able to keep some of the cash that they get when they sell their company. Well said. One last question for you. So one thing that you and I have in common, we both have a passion for leadership development. So my last hot seat question to you is what is one podcast related to leadership that you could recommend to our audience right now? Yeah, without a doubt, Jocko. Jocko. Yeah. Who's Jocko for those that don't understand? Uh, so, so Jocko Willink, 20-year uh, uh, Navy SEAL, uh, has a company called Echelon mm-hmm. Front, has a handful of books, has... Um, <sighs> Uh, let's see, um, extreme ownership, um, dichotomy of leadership, uh, uh, maybe the handbook of discipline or, um, the, the, uh, discipline the, equals freedom, discipline equals freedom, field manual, That's field what manual. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he's got a couple of kids books. And so, uh, so my kids, um, I have a, a five-year-old daughter, a four-year-old son and a one-year-old. Uh, so they're almost ready to start reading Mike and the dragons and, oh, yeah. um, uh, the way of the warrior kids. So. Um, I think everybody needs a little bit more Jacko in their life. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. All right, Daniel Stevenson, thank you for being here. Thank you for being in the hot seat. Spencer, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, hey, until next time, I'm Spencer Tenney. We'll see you then.